Hello, hello, lovely people. So good to be here with you. And today we're going to be chatting all about paving your own path. Um, this is based off of a presentation that we recently did for an organization where they asked me to come in and share about paving my own path. And so I was inspired to share some snippets of that for you or to you. I think to you is accurate to you with you. Um, and really just encourage you to reflect on where you are already a path creator, forging through, creating your own greatness, um, whatever that looks like for you, where you've already done it, and really thinking about where do you want to do it? Where would you like to pave your own path? And just understanding some of the obstacles that might come up um, for you in doing so. So the first thing to just be really aware of is that paving our own path has some requirements. It requires us to not let our past define us, right? The past path has happened. When we are forging our own path, we have to be willing to let go of how we identified with ourselves in the past. For example, I used to describe myself as being really disorganized. Um, that would not work with me as someone who helps other people become more effective and efficient. Um, I had to let go of that narrative that I held on to for so long. Another one is letting other people define you. When you are paving your own path, you cannot let other people define you and define that path for you. Um, you have to be willing to step away from other people's expectations, from other people's norms, um, and really do it yourself. I experienced this myself. I've shared about this before on the podcast. When I left finance to create my coaching business, and the response from some of my immediate family was not, yay. <laughs> it was more like, what, what, what is this coaching thing? Granted, that was 2016. Um, and I do think generally the coaching world was just less known then. But just as an example, that we, when forging our own path, have to be willing to let other people define it for themselves, but not take on those definitions, not take on their judgments. And um, the third is that we have to not let our fears and our doubts define us, understanding that, you know, our brain wants us to keep doing the same thing, wants us to stay safe, is wired to keep us alive. And because of those factors, it does not want us to forge our own path. It's highly motivated, in fact, to keep us from forging our own path. And it's developed mechanisms like fear and doubt to try and keep us small, to try and keep us from paving our own way. And we have to be mindful to not let these uh, mechanisms built to keep us alive in the wild actually stop us. Um, now, when it comes to time hacking, there's also, you know, what we have to be willing to experience or how do we actually go about paving our own path. So I'm going to share with you how it relates in terms of the time hacker method. As you guys know, everything that we everything that we produce everything every result we create is a result of what we've put into the time hacker model these things come in this is how you produce results in your life this is how you create change in your life it doesn't require time it requires these three things and so of course when it comes to paving your own path it also requires these three things now the first is belief in yourself and this doesn't have to be 100% belief, you know, thinking like, I can do this definitely, this is going to be easy. What we always want to be mindful of is that 1% belief uh, being enough. So here it's just that 1% belief that you can do something, that 1% belief that you can lead the path that you want to take. Um, what is that 1% belief? It might be, this is possible, or I could do this, or... Like, I would like to believe that I can do this, whatever that 1% belief is to get you into motion. The second, when it comes to paving your own path, is all about the decisions that you are going to have to make. As you know, you've heard me speak about this on the podcast. Everything that we do first requires us to decide. We have to decide to do it. You've decided to listen to this podcast. You have to decide to write a review on this podcast. If you have done so, great. And if you haven't, I would love if you decided to do so um, right now. You have to decide to do it. Otherwise, you won't do it. We have to decide to be willing to fail. Right. When we are paving our own path, we are going to fail. We are going to learn by, you know, 
trying things, setting hypothesis and then not working out. You have to be willing to do that. You do not get to pave your own path without failing. By definition, any new path requires us to build, requires us to learn and requires us to fail. Um, I just want to also be mindful for those of you that are listening that paving our own path doesn't mean we have to pave our own path all the time and show up in every area of our life with this like change maker, pioneer, pave making, pave pathing, whatever you want to say, um, mindset and energy, which would just be exhausting. And to be honest with all of you, my career has been spent both in paving my own path and in trying the expected path. So for example, I throughout high school, I was very much in the expected path. I did the exams, I followed the structure that was laid out for me. It was only when I left and went to apply to LSE that was the first time I was really paving my own path because I was specifically told that I wouldn't get in and not to bother applying. And by, by the school that I was in, by the careers guidance people, and I decided to do it anyway and to pave my own path and to be willing to fail, if not, and actually I was successful, which was great. Now, when I left when I left LSE, I definitely took the expected path and went to work in finance. It was uh, very much a what's easy, what's next, what can I do? And this is was very laid out for me. It was very expected that I would go from LSE into finance, and that was exactly what I did. Now, a few years later, I took again the unexpected path when I left finance um, and went to go work in tech in New York. And I remember at the time, colleagues saying to me, like, are you crazy? You're giving up such a successful career. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> I could never do that. And it was very much unexpected. It was very much me paving my own path. Um, now, when I left finance, when I left New York, sorry, I went back into finance and that was very expected, very predictable. If anyone was going to guess what this person had done, that, you know, went to LSE, went to finance, left finance and was coming back, it would probably be, yeah, she's probably going to go back to finance. So it was very much the expected path. Fast forward a few years again, and I took the unexpected path again in launching my first business, leaving finance again. Um, and it wasn't just, speaking of paving paths, it wasn't just launching a business that was quite um, an example of paving your own path. It was the business that we launched and the problem that we saw. I had, was a serial relocator. I'd lived on four continents in my 20s. And I really missed community and making friends. And, and more than that, wherever I'd lived, my social life was always outside in restaurants and bars. And I really missed just hanging out with friends. And so I created, co-created a company where we would have pop-up events in people's homes um, and other people could host them kind of like an Airbnb model. And um, that was very much me creating what I wanted to see. We ended up with over 350 events within 18 months. So it was an amazing experience. But as I've shared before, and this is my burnout story, um, you won't be surprised that that business closed down. And even when I first started my coaching practice, I actually took the expected coaching route. I started with one-to-one -one sessions, hour-long sessions, weekly sessions, whatever I saw out there. It was very much the expected path of coaches that I was around and that I saw. Now, as you guys know, I've moved far away from that, not only in the formats that we provide in terms of, I think we have one of the most accessible um, coaching one-to-one -one programs on the planet in terms of time accessibility, financial accessibility even just the other day I was on a call with a bunch of coaches and someone was floored and told me to increase the price of the one-to-one -one program and I said no <laughs> I will not um as long as the business can afford it and sustain it I want to make high quality they asked me if my coaches were junior coaches I said nope they're the best in the game I want to make high quality coaching, affordable and accessible for busy people. And that's why the sessions are 20 minutes. So we're really forging our own path in that. And also we're forging our own path and we're thought leaders in the content, in the tools that we are providing, right? In the work that we do, we are not your average. Here's how you manage your time. Here's how you put things in your calendar. Here's how you color code. Here's how you write a to-do list. We go straight to the root of what really determines our experience with time so that we can solve it. And that's why we're called time hackers, right? We focus on what, um, we hack time and we focus on what's underneath it. And that's why 
our clients achieve more faster and often unrealistic timelines, even for themselves. So just all that to share, when you pave your own path, you will also have periods of not paving your own path. Um, and, you know, when you pave your own path, much like in this example, you are listening to me share on this podcast now, I'm not only paving my own path for myself, I pave my own path and it benefits our team, it benefits our clients, it benefits the organizations that we partner with, it benefits the people at those organizations that get access to tools that actually support them. All this to say your path isn't just yours, your story will inspire others and will affect change in others. Um, I'm actually going to make this into a two-part series where I'm going to focus more in the second part around paving your own path and the failure involved but I just really wanted to you know me in short episodes but I just really wanted to get started with having you think about paving your own path and um how you are already doing so so I'd love to leave you with an, thinking about an example of where you have experience of paving your own path how you did it, what you were willing to feel, where was your 1% belief, what decisions did you have to make, how do you make those decisions, what failure did you have to experience, all that to share um, the value of paving your own path, the brilliance and the capability that you have to already do it, um, and the impact of it, which is so much more than you could ever know, so even as your brain might offer fear and doubt and every strategy it can to keep you on the expected path, on the predictable path, on the known path. I just want to fight for that part of you that that is available to pave your own path. And that might look like promotions at work or putting yourself forward for a different project or changing teams or whatever it might be. I really encourage you, even outside of work, right? It might be like, I'm actually going to do the marathon or whatever it is um, that you want to do. This is your invitation to pave your own path. And I'm going to make this a two-part series where we come back speaking about failure and paving your own path, a huge part of it. All right, that's it from me. Um, have a wonderful day and I will speak to you next time. Bye.